I'm out here on the reserve, um, really focusing on a particular group of spring migrants which are coming in day by day. A group of birds which we call hirundines, so a collective name for the swallows and the martins, but we're also adding swifts into the mix as well. So we've got our spring arrivals. They've spent the winter in Africa, south of the Sahara, and they've migrated all that way. We've got a combination of swallows, house martins, sand martins in the area. Some of them are just stopping off here. So they're actually gonna feed up, use us as a service station before moving on elsewhere to, to wherever it is they're planning to breed. We've also got territorial birds, which are here, they're on site. The swallows, they'll sit around on a wire chattering. House martins are visiting nest cups and sand martins are inspecting areas where there's the chance of breeding in a steep bank. So a lot of turnover, uh, birds coming and going depending on the, the weather conditions. So on a bright sunny day, you might not see many of these birds and that's because they're really high up in the sky feeding on the, the insects up there. On the, uh, the sort of duller days, days where there's a little bit of rain around, that's when you, you find them a little bit lower. Some of these species will arrive on the reserve, set up territories and they're looking to breed. We have swallows which tend to use the small outbuildings, the sheds, some of the lower barns that we have on site. We've even uh, adapted a few areas to make it suitable for them. So the old pillboxes, World War II gun, gun emplacements out on the seawall, we fitted swallow cups in there, artificial cups for them to use. A similar story with house martins, they breed around the buildings, We've used artificial cups in places to encourage them to nest in certain areas. And you tend to find them around the rushy, around the visitor centre. They'll add their own nest cups to the artificial ones. And some days you find these birds going backwards and forwards to wet puddles, collecting little pellets of mud and taking them back to stick them to create that cup, be it the swallows or the house mites. It's amazing construction, thousands of, of mud pellets to make up that nest site. And with San Martins, they tend to use the sheer bank. So they're looking at, along the ditches, uh, places where they can excavate a hole into the bank. And unfortunately, we haven't really got anything here that, uh, that suits them. We've, we've created banks before, they haven't quite worked. They need a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of extra thought. And we're hoping to create some of these banks in the, the future. And the final bird uh, is the swift. We have actively uh, put up nest boxes around the visitor centre. We've actually got a swift hotel. It's a bespoke design built by one of our carpenters here. It was put up a few years ago. We've seen them going in and around the building. We hope that they take up residence at some point. I don't think the swallows, martins, the hirundines and the swifts are often thought of as wetland birds. But wetlands are absolutely vital to these species. They provide these feeding areas, especially when conditions are poor. Thousands and thousands of them will, will feed over wetlands through the course of a season. Not strictly a wetland bird, but wetlands are incredibly important for them. Mm -hmm.